fish on. It's only a chub in the first peg, but isn't quite a nice size chub by the looks of it. So that's the first fish of the evening. Always going to be a chub, isn't it? Been baiting the swim for sort of two hours or so now. I've got um, I've got another three swims to have a go on. Hopefully a barb will settle on one of those. But in the meantime, we'll keep catching these. Right then, folks, you join us down on the uh, the wonderful River Team. It is uh, an absolute beautiful place to be, and we are trying to track down some of its barbel and chub. Um, so far, we've been having a few chub, but the barbel are being a bit elusive. But we've got we've got swims to to roam and to just literally travelling like each time I move, bait handful of pellets, handful of six mil, handful of eight mil on each spot, giving them that sort of free time to hopefully gain their confidence and then uh, the idea being when we drop in we catch quickly and then on to the next peg. Right then, I'm going to run you through how I go about preparing my end tackle for these smaller rivers. Um, first I'm going to get my smoke shield soft coated braid, £20. £20, pound. 20 pound seems a bit excessive but we're fishing over some seriously nasty terrain and holding fish from trees. So um, First I'm going to attach my bait. I'm going to just pass on the first pellet home and I'm going to make a lasso, just tying a, a grinner, so I'm making a loop, and then three whips on itself. So that makes a sliding knot. And all I'm going to do there is pop the pellet into that loop and tighten it down. And that's effectively my hair stop. And then when I want to change it, I'll just slide, slide the loop open again. I'm just going to trim the tag down. Pull the two pellets together. So that's going to be my hook bait, and that'll allow me to set the length of my hair. So I'll just trim that up. Grab my size 12 grappler. and I'm going to whip that on. And like I say, because my bait's on first, it allows me to set the, set the length of the hair that I want. So I don't, I don't want it too close, because the chub, the closer you have it, basically the quicker the chub manage to hook themselves. And I'm, I'm aiming for this to stay out for barbel. So, that's the sort of distance I want on my hair. I'm going to whip that in place now. I'll show you. So just not the snot. Roughly down level with the, just past the point. I'll do a couple of times back up the whippings. Back to the, the back of the hook so the, the braid always comes out the front side. And that is the end piece ready to go. So I'll get my smoke shield hook link mono, 15 pound. This stuff is tough as old boots. I have had some incredible tugs of war on the river dove with this stuff and it's never let me down, never. So I just attach the soft braid by an all bright knot. So I'll just make a loop in the end of the mono Pass the tag end of the soft coated braid, set the length that you want, so I want about that sort of distance there. Just enough for like a, a, a supple end of the rig. And then a whip around the loop of the mono. I'll go up nine times. and then twice back down the nut. And then back through the loop, the same way as you entered it. Motion it all up, and then just tease it down together until you end up with like a little carrot shape, not like that. 
just going to pull it nice and tight and trim the tag ends off. You don't have to be too neat there. I mean, you can fish it as it is like that, but I like to add a little bit of weight around the knot. So I'll just get a little bit of putty. Helps keep everything down on the bottom in that sort of, if you're fishing turbulent water. Sometimes the barbel are raw right in those, those shallow riffles and like hook links, you'd imagine just turn over all over the place. So just that little bit of putty around the knot helps keep everything in place. And it neatens up the tail end where that, where that knot is. Just roll that on there. So that is the end product there. And then you can sort of set your length if you want it. Sometimes the fish are right under any cover. So if you're fishing up against trees, to make sure you're, you can cast closer, a shorter hook link's better. It makes it easier. If you're fishing upstream of the feature and the fish are gonna come out from under the bush and approach your rig, a longer rig's better because then they, they come into contact with your bait before any sort of mainline or the lead. So you can so you just trim it up whichever sort of length suits your fishing. Pop your tail rubber out of your bolt and run kit. Onto the mono. And then just a, an overhand loop really, figure eight loop. So, round itself, twist through the two loops, just moisten it up and then slide it down together. Pull the tag tight, nestle it all down. And that is your rig ready to go. Decent chub like, but not what we're after. Another swim, another team chub. Those, uh, they're not letting those barbel have a look in at the minute, but hopefully if we keep rotating those swims, just feeding a little bit in between each rotation, it's not long before we find one of those team tigers. Just letting it have a quick breather in this flow before it goes. The, uh, it's always worth chub and barbel. Just letting them have a having a breather first before they 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 returned. Fish on. No. I should found the snags. just concentrating because this fish is trying to get in all the snags. It's another chub. Tell you what, even the team chub want to pull back. As nice as they are, I'm hoping the next one's a barbel. <laughs> Good sign for the, a healthy river though. And a sign that the tactics are working. We just want them to allow the barbel to find it. Oh God, cut that bit toy. <laughs> so a bit more about the hardware. Um, it's a 2.2 barbel rod. I've loaded my reel with 15 pound barbel line. It's it's the heaviest version of what we've got. It is so robust, it's, it's really good. It's my proper right gear, as Matt Woods calls it. Um, but another little tip, because it is heavy tackle, and these fish are a little bit low and shy. I always use, on the little rivers, I try and keep my tip low. Back leads. These are the new Olivets. Obviously designed for float fishing, but they make a fantastic back lead and they're adjustable because I can interchange them with the stem. So 
if I'm in a slower swim, I can get away with a four gram. If I'm in a little bit of a more turbulent swim, I can go up to eight. So fantastic. And another little tip that Matt showed me was to put a little bit of silicon on first. And I'll show you what that does in a minute. I just thread my silicone on and I'll put my back lead on. Right. And then that's just held in place with a line grip, one of the line grip stops. And then I'll put the bolt and run kit on. So first the run ring, then the body of the like the clip. And then my swivel. And I'll just attach that, you can either whichever knot you prefer, I'll use a polymer. Bring that tag end off. Pull the main body onto the swivel, just so the, the swivel beds down into that nicely. And your run ring will just come and sit nicely onto that clip. Just like so. And the leads I'm using, are our gripper bait up leads. Fantastic for this sort of fishing and I'm not putting a lot of bait in them. I've got some scalded pellets and I'm literally just filling one side just for a scent trail really so they come up and investigate your hook link. That just clips on. And then you just clip with a quick change. That, that figure of eight loop on your hook link from earlier. Pop that on, tie rubber up and you are good to go. So all I've done there is I've pushed a little piece of silicon onto the, the sort of tail rubber of the olivet. And all that does is because, because they're designed for float fishing, gravity holds them in place. I'm using that as a back lid there, so it's gonna be washing against all the debris on the bottom. So that little piece of silicon just stops the weight part of the olivet coming off the center, the center spike so it can't, it can't fall off, basically. Come on, Barbel. Another chub. That's four in four moves now. So we're just going to keep rotating until hopefully we find one of those Barbel. Nice stamp of fish. Good, good signs for the river as well. I just wish I'd bought the float rod now. <laughs> Didn't feel like a barbel, but <sighs> I really don't know if that was a barbel then. We'll never know. Mm, yeah, it sort of says it's not a barbel, doesn't it? <laughs> Fifteen pound. Smoke shield does not break. <laughs> so what my plan is on the team and other small rivers is um, I've touched on the, how I like to use strong tackle. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of snags in the river and nine times out of 10, the fish live there. Um, but because the tackle is so aggressive, it's a bit, apparent to the fish when they're being fished for. If you fish conventionally, rod in the air, trying to keep the line out of the water, um, what I like to do is use a little back lead. Um, you've seen the olivet on the line. Uh, the idea of that is, is to keep the rod tip down, 
and get the line to lay nice like use the current to push everything sort of within six foot of the rig along the bottom aided by that back lead and then the fish don't come into contact with the 15 pound line it's it's the scariest thing to them in their environment it's when they come feeding they touch it and see it and uh, it puts them on edge so that is a massive tip for me um just concealing your tackle as well with the rod 2.2 test curve rods sound a little bit overkill on small rivers but it doesn't matter how strong your line is if your rod's not man enough to turn the fish nine times out of ten they still end up in the snags um short but sweet the fights will be it will be very intense when you walk one <laughs> But uh, as soon as you turn them, you sort of gain the upper hand. So as I've touched, um, a lot of the time I'm looking for features. I, uh, I'm also looking for deeper water directly after shallow water. So if you get a turnover of water, some shallower, the shallow water normally increases the pace. So if you can find a deep hole with cover, after that, nine times out of ten, there'll be fish there, whether they'll be chub or barbel or both. Um, it's always a good starting point. There's lots of these little areas on rivers, on outside of bends, and to hedge your bets, I'd always put a couple of handfuls of bait. Um, then not not big handfuls, literally thirty six mil pellets and maybe ten eight mil. Um, and I'll do that and I'll, I won't fish it for at least an hour. Ideally two. If you can get two rounds of free feed, those fish become accustomed to come out and eat the food, go back to their home, come out, eat the food, go back to their home. And then they've, you've almost got that fish captive there. He's used to coming out and eating everything. Um, if, if he's back in his home when you can place a rig and then feed over the top, if he comes out for another feed, you've pretty much got a bite because he's, he's used to eating everything in the peg. Um, and with being mobile, a lot of the rivers aren't what they once were, but there's still, there's still enough there to, um, to have a proper go at. Like, and they're gems when you find them. They're, they're special fish on these little rivers. swim and after several chub no barbel as of yet so this will be the last you see of us unless I manage on this cast a barbel but um, hopefully you've taken some hints and tips on how I approach my small river chub and barbel fishing um, fingers crossed I'll see you again with a barbel but if not like and subscribe